Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time is part two to the MVRP or Multiple VLAN Registration Protocol um, series. And so in the previous part one, we walked through basic configuration, how to get MVRP up and running, you know, and how to look at the attributes and, and uh, see if the VLANs are actually being distributed. So this time we're going to look at the optional parameters. We're going to look at timers and, and how to control your environment in terms of whether those VLANs are advertised or not, whether they're learned or not, um, and, uh, and, and things like that, and, and point to point to, to speed up uh, convergence. So let's have a look at that. So uh, really, last time we looked at the steps to make MVRP happen. And so we configured MVRP globally, which was step one, and we enabled MVRP on the interfaces, which was step three, and we skipped over step two and step four uh, because they were optional parameters. So that's what we're going to look at this time. So um, under step two, we're going to look at timers and, and VLAN creation disable, and under uh, step four, we're going to look at um, registration modes and, and applicant modes and point-to-point -point and, and, and timers. So this is a topology we built last time, if you remember. Um, so there was you know three switches. There was a core, edge one, edge two. Um, there's an access point out here, so we created a couple of VLANs and watched those VLANs get distributed. Um, and we created another another VLAN off of core and, and saw it get distributed out the other way. Um, and so in a lot of cases, depending on, on how you're building your environment, you want to control those uh, those VLANs, right? So maybe you want to you want to build all your VLANs at the edge and distribute those into the core, but you don't want the core or data center's VLANs to be distributed back out to the edge, right? You don't necessarily want all your server VLANs to be distributed out to all of your edge switches, for example, um, or vice versa. You know, perhaps you don't want your edge switches to be distributed to all of your other edge switches. Maybe you just want it distributed to the core and nowhere else. So there's lots of reasons why you may... Uh, may wish to uh, control that. Um, so let's look at a couple of them. So first of all, um, under the interface here, we've got an applicant mode. And so um, so by default, the applicant mode is set to normal. Um, so when we set it to non-participant, it stops the port from advertising any VLANs. It stops it from sending PDUs, right? So um, basically, it'll still build those VLANs, but it's not going to advertise them out. So if we don't want to advertise those from the core out, for example, um, then then we can set the, uh, the applicant mode on that interface to non-participant. So it'll still receive VLANs uh, from the upstream, but it's not going to advertise any downstream. Uh, the next one we have, disable dynamic VLAN creation. Um, and so, so this is a global command called VLAN creation disable. And what it does is it won't build dynamic VLANs that it learns from other places unless there's a port um, in that, in, on that switch for that VLAN. So if you've got VLAN 10 and 20, for example, um, with ports on that interface, it will dynamically uh, build the VLAN and add the uplinks, right? Uh, but it's not going to create VLANs for ports that it doesn't have. So that's what that's what VLAN creation disable does, and that's global, not on the interface. Uh, next, we have point to point. So point to point goes under an interface. So just like rapid spanning tree, what point to point does without point to point, let me go there, is it waits for the timers to expire um, for join. Um, and and uh, prune right and so uh, if a change is made downstream it's going to wait for that timer to expire because it doesn't know if there's multiple devices it doesn't know if it's on a broadcast domain or not so when you set it to point to point just like rapid spanning tree those changes are going to happen immediately it's going to add or withdraw those vlans immediately without waiting for the timer to expire Again, that's done on a per interface basis, and it needs to be done at both ends of that link in order for it to work correctly. Um, so there's uh, registration modes. There's two registration modes um, 
and so normal is what you have by default, right? So it accepts all MVRP messages and participates in MVRP, right? So that's the way your ports are by default. Forbidden mode, um, it um, so if the VLAN is added to the forbidden VLAN list using the VLAN registration mode forbidden command, right? Uh, under the interface, so this is an interface command. Um, then MVRP neither declares nor registers any VLANs on the port. So all the registration messages received uh, for those VLANs are ignored. So basically you can say for these specific VLANs, I want you to ignore them, right? I don't want you to, I don't want you to register them um, or, or declare them on that interface. So if there was a, a uh, particular VLAN that you didn't want, you wanted to be forbidden, then you can add that to the list. And you can create a, a um, you know, a, a, a range as well under there. Uh, MVRP timers. So there's uh, three timers, really. There's the join timer, the leave timer, and the leave all timer. Um, it's really important to note that um, these need to be the same across all of your devices, right? In your MDU environment, you can't, uh, MVRP environment, you can't have them mixed all over the place. So they need to be the same everywhere. Um, and there's two ways to do this. You could do it globally or you could do it per interface. So per interface overrides the global. Um, so the, the, basically what they do is the join timer, um, defines the interval for the PDU transmit and makes VLAN declarations uh, or other MVRP enabled inter on other interfaces. So basically, how often is it going to send those those uh, uh, PDUs, right? Um, the leave timer, right? It's uh, um, how long after it receives a leave, a leave request, how long does it wait before it actually removes that? And these are in milliseconds, I should point out. So if the interface receives a VLAN join message before the timer expires, then the VLAN remains registered. But otherwise, it will remove that VLAN after the leave timer expires. Uh, and lastly, the leave all timer uh, defines a time interval at which a port generates a leave all PDU. Um, Okay, so for the most part, though, you're going to leave those those timers alone, right? There's really uh, very few reasons to change them. And remember, if you change them, you need to change them everywhere in your MVRP environment. So let's have a quick look at how that works, right? So uh, I have my three switches again. Um, so edge two, let's do a show mvrp attributes um, and so what you'll see here is i've got a whole bunch of vlans that i'm learning right so uh, i'm learning you know one uh, 10 and 20 are fixed right because i have ports in them right so they're quite active and then i have a whole bunch here that i don't have ports in but i'm learning from upstream so 30 and then 100 to 120 for example um, so let's say, um, and then on the other side, let's have a look here, show MVRP attributes. Um, I've got a whole bunch that I have here and I've learned 20 from the other side. So let's try, um, let's try changing our, our applicant mode. So we'll go to our interface. Um, so the interface is 131, right, that we have it enabled on. So we'll go to config T, interface E131, uh, and then we are going to change our, our, uh, our applicant mode to non-participant. So we're not going to advertise uh, VLANs on our, on our interface. So, oops. And so now, if I hop over to uh, edge two here and look at my attributes again, you'll see that all of those are gone, right? Because we told the device on the other side to not advertise its VLANs out, okay? But if I look at the core, uh, look at the attributes on this side, right? It still has those VLANs 
and it's still learning from the upstream. So you would use this if we didn't want to advertise those out, but we wanted to learn. So on your core, for uh, for example, you don't necessarily want to to advertise your server VLANs, but you do want to receive VLANs from the edge and have those auto created. Okay, so uh, we will take that back out, or we'll make it uh, we'll make it normal mode. Just to return that to where we were. Um, and then let's look at, um, say, VLAN creation disable. So that's a global command. Um, so we'll do an MVRP uh, VLAN creation disable. Whoop. Okay. And so if I now look at show MVRP attributes again, Right, I've still got VLAN 20 here, and so what's going to happen is it's not going to create that VLAN. So if I do a show VLAN 20, it's not creating the VLAN, right? Um, and uh, and so because I don't have any ports in it, even though I'm receiving it, it's not going to create it, right? Otherwise, it would create it on the uplink, and then on the other side. everything is normal. So no changes on that side, just changes on this side, right? So it just doesn't create that VLAN. It doesn't add it to the uplink if I don't have any ports in it. There's no point doing that. So I should have those back. which I do. Okay, so VLAN 20 is now created again, right? Because I took out that uh, the um, VLAN creation disable. Um, and then the last thing, we'll look at uh, registration mode. So um, let's do from edge two here, uh, we've learned all these other VLANs, right? 100 to 120. Um, and so we're gonna turn on um, uh, registration mode forbidden. Um, show MVRP is on 131, so we'll go into interface E131 because it's an interface level command. Um, we'll do an MVRP registration mode forbidden. Um, and then we choose what VLAN. So let's say VLAN uh, 100 to 110, for example. Okay, so now if I do a show MVRP attribute, it no longer has 100 to 110, which I told it to forbid, right? So those are now empty entries. So um, easy as that. So it will not now learn those VLANs. So if you want to filter, even though it's still receiving the PDUs for those VLANs, it's it's forbidding them or refusing to uh, to add those VLANs. So that's how that works. Um, and then the last thing would just be, you know, the the uh, point to point interface. So uh, it's just an MVRP point to point. And again, you want to turn that on on both sides. Um, in order to, uh, in, in order to get that faster, uh, convergence in your network. Um, so that's it. Uh, timers, I'm not going to mess with, uh, generally I'm going to leave timers at their default unless you have some very specific reason to do so. Uh, but you know, a couple of, a couple of ways to control your topology. If you want to, um, not advertise or not learn or, um, you know, or not uh, create VLANs that you don't have a member for. Um, those are all available to you as optional parameters. So uh, that's it for today. Um, I hope that was helpful and uh, have a great day. We'll see you.